Everyone hear me? All right. I'm sure everyone's getting hungry. Um, hello, thank you for coming. My name is James. This is Nathan Shake and Brady Peacock, and we are Team Bycor. Our project is the low-cost desktop design evaluation system. So everyone has worked at a bench like this. <laughs> I mean, everyone's already laughing, bringing back nightmares. Uh, you have tangled wires all over the place. Your testing workspace is cluttered, and you're trying to use many different devices at once, each of which being expensive and non-portable. So our goal, what we're trying to do, is to force and sense voltage and current at high precision for integrated circuit or IC testing purposes. And this is generally what it takes to do this. You know, people, everyone's already laughing, everyone knows. So we, we saw this, we were able to see this after taking, have, having had a tour of, the, of Vicor's testing facilities. So wouldn't it be great if we can pack all of this testing equipment down into a low cost, portable solution that can achieve, achieve the same high precision results. If we can effectively condense this inefficient setup into a compact four sense unit, we can reduce the overall testing system cost, increase IC testing efficiency, and free up real estate in the lab. Our aim is to develop a one plug, sub $5,000 desktop size evaluation system to force and sense currents and voltages across a device under test or DUT as seen here. And uh, as the team is not focusing on high voltage applications at this point, our anticipated best outcome is centered around, is centered around cutting edge, low voltage, high performance DC testing. The entire system will be controlled using a Raspberry Pi here. And a main printed circuit board will be placed at the base of the evaluation system enclosure here, which will connect the device under test to a number of measurement cards here, as well as handle the efficient delivery of safe power to all elements in the system. Now, the main, the main modular card that we're going to be focusing on this year is the force sense unit or FSU card, as shown here, which will feature two distinct FSU testing channels for testing purposes. So the idea here is, is that this compact solution can be easily passed off to others in the lab. We seek to create an evaluation system, and we seek to we seek to test ICs, but the problem with this is all ICs are different. Wouldn't it be convenient if you had a nice universal system that allow you to test any IC? Well, our system features a DUT board that'll allow you to test an IC of any pin configuration and count up to 48 pins. Since we are dealing with low voltage and low current, we're able to take advantage of MUX ICs to connect to each of our pins instead of bulky arrays to keep our system small in size. We'll be using a digital to analog converter to easily to control the test voltage along with an analog to digital converter to easily read back the, the resulting results. <sighs> the system will be controlled locally by Arduinos. They'll all be controlled back to a Raspberry Pi for an easy, low cost, versatile control solution. Before being able to assemble and physically test our circuit, we first had to research, select, and simulate components to make sure they fit to our design specifications. Once we had our components selected, we eventually had to move on to use LSP Spice to be able to simulate our circuit in order to test or invalidate our outputs. Once we had that done, we moved on to the physical implementation, but we very quickly learned that the physical world is a lot less nice as the ideal world. <laughs> Testing components can be a lot more time consuming and proving concepts can be very taxing. For example, we introduced a MUX into our system and in turn it ended up throwing our results off. At first we didn't realize that we needed to bring the inhibit pin low as we just thought we could leave it open. Once this was out of the way, we realized an incremental step that would allow us to bridge us from where we are now to where we want to go, and that was to use our circuit as an ohmmeter. We're able to place a load of any impedance on the circuit and for using our circuit to force and sense the resulting voltage 
and current, we're able to accurately determine the resistance place at the load. This load ultimately emulates one of the tests that we'll be eventually doing on an IC. When testing pins on the dot, we don't just want to force a constant voltage. We want to be able to test over a range of voltages. So we wanted our system to be programmable. In order to make our system programmable, sorry, we had to choose programmable ICs, and we had to control these. We implemented communication protocols in both Python and C++ for the Raspberry Pi and Arduinos, respectively. Many of our ICs came with open source code libraries written in Python to be run on the Pi. But we, used, we wanted to use dedicated Arduinos for each IC to take load off of the Pi, so we had to translate that code into C++. The Python code had very little to no documentation, so we had to reverse engineer these software libraries and figure out all the subtleties needed to make it work with, in a different language with different hardware all on our own. By the end of the first semester, we need to create a functional prototype that was very close to our final vision, so that for next semester we can focus on writing the firmware for our system. And we did just that. Here is our first prototype of the four cent circuit we've been talking so much about, with the electrical side and computing side working in harmony. Since our prototype was built from scratch, we don't make use of any pre-made firmware, interfaces, off-the-shelf components, or bench supplies, all from scratch. We're currently using an ATX power supply, which gives us the independent voltage rails that we need, while still allowing us to achieve the goal of a one-plug system. In order to reach our anticipated best outcome, a few challenges lie ahead of us. We still need to design the two PCBs mentioned earlier, being the FSU board and the main board. As of yet, we only have a prototype for the FSU, not the main board. So we need to develop this board and write the firmware for that as well. Alongside hardware development, we need to build an application programming interface, or API. And if time permits, we'll use this API to further build a more user-friendly graphical interface. This will allow users to interact with the controller system without needing to know how it works under the hood. With these design challenges realized, we are up to the task of producing this low-cost, self-contained, high-precision testing unit that will eventually be on every engineer's desk. With that said, we would like to thank those who helped us along the way. Thank you.